Hey, everybody. Welcome to DualShock Shows Episode 2. I'm one of your hosts, Matt Mobley, alongside Tom Freeman. Hey, yeah. Tom, this is the second episode of Dual Shot, and I'd say that our first episode went pretty well. Went all right, yeah. Uh, I was telling you earlier that we sounded a little stiff at the, at the very beginning, but, uh, never fear, listeners, we're trying to, we're, uh, this is a work in progress. We, and Tom and I have never actually hosted a podcast before, so we were putting on our hosting voices and whatnot, the very first episode, but, now we're trying to just sound like we're having a conversation that you just happen to be listening to. We don't want to put on our hosting voices. We want you to feel comfortable. We don't want, you know, we're not, we're not Pat Sajak and Alex Trebek over here. You know, we start every show with uh, a segment called "What Are You Playing?" Uh, Tom, what have you been playing? So I've been playing Dark Souls. So I started the new game recently. Oh uh, man, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever played it? No, uh, <laughs> and that 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 uh, that reason will become fairly obvious to you. No, but um, no, I've been trying to play it solo for the first time because every other time I've played it, I've played online, summoning people to help me with bosses and stuff. But I just thought I'd try it on my own, and it is a much harder experience. But I think you know it'd be a personal achievement to complete it on my own. I also kind of want the platinum for it, as usual. It's going to be a pain because you have to get all sorts of miracles in every special weapon and all that, so it's whether I can be bothered at the end of the day, it's not, I've gotten all the boss trophies, so, um, and I've also been playing GTA Online, but you Ooh. should, uh, you should definitely be playing that at the moment, because there's a lot of hacked servers, you could probably YouTube it, I mean, I've taken a lot of footage, so I might at some point, uh, put that up, but, um, yes, yeah, odd things are happening on that game, there's, uh, flying dinosaurs, uh, floating toilets that people are driving, People with hippos on their heads. Oh, are you playing online uh, on uh, on PC? No, on PS3. Really? Yes, exactly. You wouldn't believe it. That's why I was so surprised. You know, I'm gonna have to check that out. You definitely should. So, if anyone has uh, GTA 4 on the PlayStation, I'd you know just get on, find a few rooms. There's definitely weird stuff happening. I mean, I've got videos of me in a a passenger in a bright orange Hummer that's uh, flying and firing rockets. So. Yes, yeah. we it's, should. Uh, we should consider putting that on our on our VGU YouTube. Like I said, I've taken a few videos, so I might splice them together of a highlight reel of some weird stuff that's been happening. That would, that would probably be a lot of fun. But yeah, it's pretty funny. So yeah, but that's all I've been playing this week. So what about you? Um, I don't know. Well, actually, I do have a lot of time. That's a lot. Uh, but I I have a lot of games, and I. I don't always finish a lot of them. Yeah. So, last week, I was trying to get to the stack of games that I ha- uh, that I have, that I haven't actually finished, rather than the games that I've already played and finished that, that I'm just trying to platinum. Yeah. So, I started out with Bayonetta, uh, and Bayonetta, I actually, uh, Bayonetta and Bioshock 2, which, are, which I began with, uh, I actually have played on, uh, Xbox, but I was trying to get trophies on, PS3, so I haven't actually com- uh, completed it for the first time on a PlayStation. But I started with I started with Bayonetta, and that game is much harder than you expect it to be. And you have to, like harder than DMC, yeah, because it, because it, uh, it's by the guys that made the original Devil May Cry. So I didn't even I didn't even finish a whole level. Doesn't the um, PlayStation port of Bayonetta have a lot of issues though compared to the Xbox? It, it's supposed to have some screen tears, I believe, and some, you know, like, slower runtime, I think. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, I barely notice it. There are, uh, except for the load times, like, Bayonetta's gotta be the only, the only game that needs to load its start menu. Mm. <laughs> like, when you pause the game, it's like loading, and then you're paused. Hey. It's, it's that bad. But, it's still a good game. Yeah. It's a ridiculous game, but it's it's still a good game. It's just really tough, and you can't and you like can't get any trophies on easy except for like some of the uh, some of the some like you can't get campaign trophies on easy. Okay. If you if you beat a, if you beat the set of chapters, like there's only three sets of chapters, uh, one through four, blah blah blah, all that kind of. Like, but it's on normal and on hard. Like there are two trophies for each. It's like beat missions one through four on normal and beat missions one through four on hard. You can't beat it on easy. It's hard, the hardest difficulty then on that game. Uh, I believe so, yeah. but I wouldn't know. Like, I'm that's that's a game that I'm not going to platinum because uh. <laughs> it's already tough enough on normal. So, 
But um, I like I said, I didn't even finish a whole mission. I was just like, I can't, I can't do this right now. Yeah. So I threw, I threw in Bioshock Two, and Bioshock Two is not a great game. It definitely doesn't live up to the first one. No, but I do like it. Yeah, it's it's decent. But the problem with Bioshock Two is that it, it's so padded with time, like because yeah. of all the little sisters and whatnot. Yes, it's very tedious. I played one level and was in there for like four hours. Oh. See, I'm so close to getting the platinum for that game, but I just can't do it because I just get so bored at the moment. I mean, I have yeah. to complete it on hard, but... Uh. The one trophy I've never been able to get, uh, whether it was the trophy or the achievement on Xbox, was get through a gather without getting hit and without anybody getting to the little sister. I think I have that trophy. It's um, I think it, I did watch a guide on YouTube, to, but I think... uh. You just put tons of traps and then just right. hide, <laughs> hide somewhere really obscure. I actually did it on Minerva's Den, but it didn't count. That's going to be uh, really good, that uh, DLC. I've not tried that. Yeah, the Minerva's Den DLC is very, very good. Like, it's uh, it's pretty much better than the game itself. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I did it once on Minerva's Den, but it didn't count. And then one of my friends actually managed to get it and get it the achievement. And I was like, fuck her, so, so I deleted her, her, oh. her profile. <laughs> no, I actually just needed the money. So, uh, so I, I deleted, like, I needed the space on the hard drive, and I needed the money, so I, I sold the game and whatnot. Uh, but, yeah, I played that for a little while and got a couple of trophies. Uh, yeah. th- threw in Borderlands 2 for a couple of hours. And same thing, Borderlands 2 is a good game. It's just, it moves really slowly, and so it's really easy to fall out of. See, I don't know. I say, I'm not going to get Borderlands 2 because I bought Borderlands 1 uh, fairly recently. We uh, bought it because a friend had it and I thought I'd play it with them. So I'd heard a lot about it. And uh, right. I, th- I know, I find it really grindy. It's just, it starts off strong and then it just gets more of the same. And then it's just go here, you know, press square on this thing and then run, you know, drive all the way back to the nearest town. It's just, uh, and then the yeah. enemies just get tougher and tougher. And then Well, I can. Longer. I can tell you that Borderlands, uh, uh, both games, much better with friends. Like, if you're playing it alone, it's so boring. Like, you don't even care. But playing it with friends, it's just really fun to just be assholes to each other. Yeah. And just be ridiculous. Um, next up, I played Hitman Absolution. I played one mission. Finally managed to get through it, because Hitman is so hard. <laughs> play a little, play a little DMC, uh, trying to work on my son of Sparta, to, uh, play through. Okay. A little bit of Dead Space, but didn't manage to make it that far. With the son of Sparta difficulty, which one's that? Cause they do different things, don't they? It's, um, yes, uh, it's just, it's basically a harder mode, uh, than hard. Uh, cause I saw, um, somewhere they had, like, modes where, you know, you die in one hit, but so do enemies, and. Yeah, like there, uh, it goes, the three of uh, the three main difficulties for your first playthrough is human, demon, uh, uh, or human devil hunter and Nephilim, and those are basically easy, medium, and hard, respectively. Yeah. And when you beat it on any one of those, you unlock Sun of Sparta, which is a harder mode. And then you beat it on that, you 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 unlock Dante Must Die. That's a harder mode. All right. You um, uh, then you beat it on that, you unlock Heaven and Hell. That's you, uh, that's enemies die in one hit, but so do you. And then you beat on that, you unlock hell and hell, which enemies have regular health, but you die in one hit. Oh, that sounds like a grind. <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you this much. After you beat it on Son of Sparta difficulty, it becomes much easier. Yeah. Because after doing so, you unlock uh, a skin that gives you unlimited devil trigger. Okay. So that will definitely help. So what does Devil Trigger do? Just uh, it's it, it it regenerates your health and and makes you stronger, makes your attack stronger for a limited time. So yeah, I mean and that'll definitely help on Dante Must Die and Heaven and Hell because you just got to beat all of the enemies around you in Heaven and Hell and 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 kill them in one hit. Yeah, but um also uh, almost done. Uh, Saints Row the Third. Played a little bit of that. Finished uh, the Trouble with Clones DLC. Uh, I didn't buy any of the DLC, but how is I have I have the uh, the full package. Complete edition. Yeah, the complete edition. So uh, the Trouble with Clones was really fun, actually. Like I, I I was really enjoying it. There's a whole point where uh, Pierce dresses up as Aisha because because the the point of the DLC is 
this nerdy kid clones uh Johnny Gat and, oh, right. and and makes him like this gigantic titan of a monster. And and he's like wrecking the city and so they dress Pierce up as uh as Aisha, his old girlfriend from I think the first of the first two games. Yeah. And uh and since he's a monster he doesn't know any better, so Pierce is on stage like weekly singing an Aisha song mm-hmm. while you're while you're in this like like suit where you have this gun where you can shoot bees at at the audience members to keep them away from the speakers to ca- uh, to keep them uh, to keep them causing feedback. Am I uh, right in thinking none of the weapons and vehicles carry over to the main game there? Uh, yes, they do. They do carry over. They do. Uh, see, I heard otherwise. That's okay. Because like I've I've got uh, like I've also been playing Genki Ball Seven and like I get some. Uh, some costumes from that that I can still wear, uh, still play with, and still and some weapons that I can also use in the main game as well. So it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, threw in Jack and Daxter for a little while, but not much else to say about that. Got like one one orb. Are you still on the first one? Yeah, I'm still on the first one. Uh, but here's what I've been playing most of the week. I've been playing again Metal Gear Solid Three. Yes. Because as you know, I believe I mentioned this last week, I, I ordered uh, the MGS HD collection. And uh, I got it in the mail pretty much like the day after uh, like last week's show. Yeah. So I immediately threw it in and started playing MGS again. And I love 3 so much. Did you start with 3? Or... Uh, no, no. A long, well, I mean, I started with 3 with the collection. But a long, long time ago, I did play uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. And then I play, and then I played three, yeah. uh, months and months later, and then never, uh, and then never finished it, and then started it again, all, uh, maybe like three months ago, finished it, and then I started playing it again on on PS3 because I played the on uh, the other one on PS2. So now I'm I've just finished it again. I got fifty seven percent of trophies. Uh, trophy corner, real quick. You can actually platinum. Metal Gear Solid 3 in one playthrough if you're diligent enough. Yes, you can. I have the guide as well. I should have done it. I just didn't. But it's it, oh. so it's very hard because yeah. you gotta you gotta like find all types of all like fungi, birds, snakes, frogs, snakes, snakes yeah. uh, fish, all kinds of stuff. You gotta find all of the all of the camo, all of the face paint. Uh, that's like the only, and you have to, the hardest trophy is you have to get through the game without killing anybody. Oh, I got that. Wait. <laughs> it makes the uh, sorrow sequence, you know, the bit where you're, uh, tripping yeah, yeah. through there so much easier. You just, yeah, but... <laughs> there's no one dead, so you just walk down, like, I'm done. I only, uh, when I finished my playthrough, I realized that I only killed 98 people. Only. So, which was, which was, well, it was better than than before because I used to just grab uh, grab a pistol and be like, "Fuck these guys, I'm <laughs> getting out of here." <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's that's all I've been playing. And Did I you love... try the because uh, on the Metal Gear Solid uh, HD collection, the Metal Gear Solid Three is the original games, Metal Gear and Metal Gear Two. Yeah, uh, I did turn on Metal Gear for just a little bit. Oh, and so hard. I was like, I got. I got no idea what I'm doing right now. I love the music and it's like, it, boom, boom. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, I'm trying to play it. I'm playing the Metal Gear series in, in in the chronological order, and I, I actually started Portable Ops a long time ago, but never finished it. So I I'm wouldn't kinda, call that. Is it canon? It is canon. It's it's uh, between uh, it's 1970. It's between three and Peace Walker. Peace Walker, yeah, and uh. It's not as good as the, uh, the other ones, but I'm gonna complete it just for the sake of the story. Yeah. But I, I was watching a, a, a walkthrough on YouTube because I, I, like I said, I started it a long time ago and I can, uh, and, and never finished it, so I've got like halfway through the game and so I'm kind of just catching up, refreshing the story in my mind and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, that's all I've been playing. Okay. Uh, and, uh, here's what you should be playing, listeners, is, it's the PS Plus deals. Every week, PlayStation Plus comes out with these new these new games to uh, free or discounted for you to play, and uh, most of them are really good. We should start with the biggest news though for uh, us is uh, Skyrim DLC though. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, not exclusive to Plus, but the uh, Dragonborn packs now on uh, PSN in America it's nine ninety nine. I'm not sure what the price is over here. I'm guessing probably seven ninety nine, and it's uh fifty percent off for the launch week. But it'll go up by ten dollars uh, next week. So get it quick if you want it. Yeah, I mean, I, there's got to be a lot of Skyrim fans out there that have just been waiting for weeks and weeks and months and months, just waiting for Bethesda to get their shit together and put their DLC on the PS3. See, I'm a big fan of Skyrim, but I'm not sure if I'll be getting this DLC because, you know, the game is broken still, you know, as much as people like sugarcoat it, it does, it just gets to a point where it's unplayable. But one of my characters, you know, I can barely do anything with, I hit a loading screen, it'll take, you know, almost three minutes and then I'll get out and then it's just super slow when I'm fighting an enemy. It's just, ugh. And I can't imagine what adding DLC to that game would do. Yeah. Um... But don't forget that uh, the other DLC packs, if you're a Skyrim fan, the other DLC packs are going to be out in the next couple of weeks. Hearthfire is going to be next Tuesday, and Dawnguard will be the week after. So if you're a Skyrim fan, pick those up, because they're finally here on PS3. Uh, and also, uh, not part of PS Plus, but if you love PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, uh, new characters, Gravity Rush's Cat and Starhawk's Emic Graves, are free on PSN right now. So I've downloaded them, and if you download them, you also get the beta, uh, the characters for the beta version as well. So I would pick those up if you love if you love PlayStation All Stars. I personally love it. I think it's a great price to get anyway. Yeah, definitely. So uh, you know, if you decide you want to get it, you can you you can have those from the get go. So what's happening on the uh, Plus Store in the US? Um, it's actually not a great week for us. I mean, we get. Uh, we get the Persona 4 Arena time trial for free. All right. Uh, and that's, like, the most interesting news. Like, we have, oh, four PSN games that are discounted. Uh, Derek the Deathfin is $4. Critter Crunch is $1.40, which is a strange price. Uh, Alien Breed is $8.00. And that's, uh, that's a PSN and Vita game. Yeah. So $8 for, I think, both. Or each. I mean, they're they're listed separately, but uh, NHL 13 is discounted from fifty dollars to thirty eight thirty nine. And uh, the free game for this week is a little game called Closure. Now, personally, me personally, I I heard that Closure was only okay, so I'm really not interested. So yeah, that shouldn't listeners that shouldn't put you off for PlayStation Plus. Not every week is going to be like, oh man, that's not, uh, that, uh, that listing sucks. I don't want I that. I always find the uh, best weeks are around Christmas time, exactly. the, um, E3, because they want to yeah. promote their stuff. And, you know, all the holidays, they usually have a big deal going on. And uh, also, just an FYI for you guys, uh, expiring soon on PlayStation Plus is the Retro City Rampage, which is free for PS3 uh, and PS Vita, and uh, the Karateka PSN game that was that was uh, $5 last week. That's The discount is going to be nullified pretty soon. So grab those if you want them. Just to mention again that if you uh, renew or purchase PlayStation Plus between now and the 5th of March, you still get that extra three months. So if you're thinking about do it, That's I'd right. say do it soon. So yeah, I would I would definitely pick it up. $50 over 15 months right now, between now and March 5th, so go for it. Uh, what's what's going on in the in the UK store? Is it is it the same deals or what? It's a it's a pretty slow week again, but we got uh, Aliens Colonial Marine has a uh, 20% off on their plus. Uh, NHL 13 has 10% off, and for the Vita they have a Wipeout game for free. But Ooh. that's about it for notable. But yes, I would rather have Wipeout than this closure game. Yeah. <laughs> It's about that time for the news, Tom. Last week, it's a shame that uh, this happened like Thursday, the day after <laughs> <laughs> the day after we we recorded. But Dice thir- 2013 happened last week, and uh, one of the one of the big panels that happened was Gabe Newell. Uh, Vows Gabe Newell sat down with, in a panel with J.J. Abrams. Uh, you know him from you know directing Super Eight and and uh, Star Trek, and he's doing the new soon Star to be Trek. Star Wars, yeah, and soon to be Star Wars. And Star Trek Into Darkness comes out, I think, in May or April or something like that. Um, anyway, so they sat down together, and J.J. Abrams mentioned that he'd like to make a movie based on a Valve game. Now, there's no word on which game. He just expressed interest. But I was going to ask you, Tom, what uh, 
Do you think that a Valve, a Valve game, a movie based on a Valve game would work? I think it could. I'd say, uh, you know, I wouldn't make it explicit to, you know, follow the same storyline. But I mean, <laughs> think about uh, Half Life Two because that starts in the uh, this kind of dystopian uh, future. But that, you know, if it was it City Seventeen, City Seventeen. I, yeah. I think if they did a movie about the story of how, you know, kind of how oppressive that city is, something like to do with that storyline, or even how they got invaded, because that's never shown. Yeah, that could be cool because J.J. Abrams likes his, you know. Flat Flashy lights and explosions, so I think that Yeah, work. I was actually seeing a lot of comments on this story, and people were saying that they it obviously couldn't be like a Portal movie based on the game and a Half-Life movie based on the game, because Shell and, and Gordon Freeman, respectively, both don't speak. No. And to give them voices would be... would. I mean, it would cause an uproar. Yeah, it'd be betraying the franchise, some would feel, I'm sure. So... A lot of people were saying, show us a story that we've never seen before. You know, show us, like, how Barney got from Half-Life 1 to Half-Life 2. Yeah. Barney would be a good character, yeah. Yeah. Somebody suggested Greg Grunberg uh, uh, in the, to be Barney, which I can actually see. Well, what else to Valve I mean... Uh, they, they, well, right? they have Left 4 Dead, which could also... Left 4 Dead would make a, a pretty good, cheesy... Uh, action zombie. They made it a B movie type thing, like uh, Dawn of the Dead. The right. Uh, they also own Team Fortress Two. Oh yeah. And that would be an interesting movie. You can you can see a Pixar type, you know, funny but mature movie. I love watching the Team Fortress Two, like Meet the Spy, Meet the Sniper, all those trailers. Yeah. So I I think that could be a good movie if you still did it like in that style and you still did all those jokes. I think that would be a lot of fun to uh, to watch to watch that. I've always thought that that would make a great cartoon as well. Yeah. Um. There's more dice news. I have a couple more dice stories. Uh, Quantic Dream CEO David Cage mentioned at Dice that Beyond Two Souls is almost in beta. The game will be released this year, and a release date will be announced soon. I love Quantic Dream. Did you ever play, um, what's their first game, uh, Fahrenheit? Well, uh, I think Fahrenheit was their second game. Was it? Uh... I, I think they did some kind of, like, really indie game beforehand. Um, I'd have to look it up. But I did, I mean, I believe it's Fahrenheit in, in the UK, but it's called Indigo Prophecy over here. Yeah, right. And I don't know where my copy went, because I used to own it. I used to own it, and I don't know where it went. And I got pretty far in it, and it's very, very weird. But, but um, I never got to finish it. They played Heavy Rain, I assume. I did play Heavy Rain. That was my first Platinum. And uh, I really loved Heavy Rain. And if I hadn't accidentally spoiled myself, uh, that ki- I would have never seen that killer coming. So, But uh, Heavy Rain is a great game. Uh, I mean, it's not without its problems, obviously. Well, of course it's, not, no. <laughs> uh, but, Jason. Jason. Basic, basic controls in Heavy Rain are not the best. Neither is the voice acting, either, for a story-based game as well. Well, I mean, you are trying to get a bunch of people like with accents. like French people to do New York accents. To, to fake New York accents. It's, it's very hard. But, I mean, I gotta say, uh, <laughs> the origami killer... <laughs> um, I would say that that Ethan Mars and Norman Jaden were probably well, no, Ethan Mars and and the girl I can't uh, Madison were Madison. two of the two of the best. Oh, and and uh, the PI, what's his name? Scott Scott, Scott Shelby Scott, Scott Shelby because yeah. he was because he was an American and he was his his voice work was amazing. Mm-hmm. Ethan Mars' vo- uh, voice was pretty good. Uh, Norman James was the worst, but he, uh, but ironically, he was like the second best character. Yeah, as so, I say, he's probably my favorite character in that game. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, I, I love that game very much. I, I, I'd like to play it again sometime, but every time I do, I just remember how I, I spent like hours trying to platinum it, trying to get all the endings and playing it over and over again. And then I'm like, I think I can wait for a replay. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. What do you think about the concept of Beyond Two Souls, though? Because I don't know, I find. I'm not too keen on it, to be honest. The whole ghost following. I don't know. It sounds interesting. Yes. By the way, uh, yeah, they did. They did do a Windows Dreamcast game first called Omicron: The Nomad Soul. Uh, Pretty indie, but um, 
but uh, yeah, Beyond Two Souls, it it is it sounds kind of intriguing, and I'm kind of into it. I like I want to check it out, but uh, I'm I'm kind of saving. Uh, like I, at first, I was like, that sounds weird, <laughs> especially like the especially like the first trailer that we saw at E3 where oh, yeah, Ellen Page has her head all shaved and one shaving, yeah. And and I was just like, this looks weird, but as time wore on, I was like, I really want to check this out. Like I was like, and it's Quantic Dream. I loved Heavy Rain, so I so got to check it out. It's going to be an it. interesting game, regardless. It's just, yeah, of course. You know, yeah, whether it be good. Um, one last piece of dice news. Uh, this is the big one. Uh, Ubisoft announced at Dice that Rayman Legends has been delayed until early September. Uh, more than six months later than its intended February 26th release date. We were supposed to get it. In like two weeks. Yeah. And also with this news came the announcement that Legends will no longer be Wii U exclusive and will be coming to Xbox 360 and PS3 as well. Now that means that basically this game was done and then these, these execs it. came in and were like, nope, push it back because we're, uh, we're porting it. Yeah. And I don't think that's fair. No. I think, I mean, Look, I love Rayman Origins, and I'm glad that Legends is coming to PS3, but that uh, those ports could have waited. Like, the game was done. These guys have been working very hard. Uh, they they probably missed out a lot of hours with their family just trying to make sure that they, that they got Hit this release. Really, I mean, and now they got all this free time because it's yeah, going to be like, outsourced to whoever else is porting it. Yeah, because, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Legends was supposed to be a Wii U launch title as well, and I they think, had to push yeah. it back. They had to push it back to February, and now they're pushing it back again. They should have. What they should have done was release the Wii U title, and then just and then the ports could have come out later. You know, like I mean, there must be some sort of deal going on because I know there's an arrangement for um, Microsoft regarding PlayStation, like uh, network titles. Like they can't put stuff on Xbox Live Arcade. Mm-hmm. It's, if it's hit on the PlayStation Network beforehand, it yeah, has to be at the same time or not at all. Well, that's fine. And they should have just... I mean, they could have released the ports on the same day. Yeah, but that's what but, I mean. I think, you know, they'd be like, no, we're not accepting something that's come out on the Wii already. Uh, I mean, it would have given the Wii some kind of advantage. I mean, when the Wii came out, when the Wii U came out, we... We were all kind of joking about it, like, like, why would we get Batman Arkham City? Why would we get Mass Effect 3? We already have it on our other systems. Yeah. And this could have been the Wii U's advantage, like, well, we have Rayman. You're not getting it until September. So, but they don't get that now. And as a result, here's an, uh, here's a great epilogue to that story. As a result, Rayman creator Michelle, I believe that's how, uh, how uh, it's Michelle Ansel. Michelle Ansel, uh, stands, uh, he, he stands alongside the members of the Rayman Legends dev team. To protest the delay, he had a sign that had Rayman on it in the center. He was crying, and it's in French, I believe. And it's and it's and the speech bubble uh, translates to help or please, I believe. And um, and it says uh, show your support for Ubisoft Mount Pelier, uh release Rayman. So, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what the sign says. That he's not had a great relationship with uh, Ubisoft either, because. Um after the first, uh, Ubisoft said he could create a Beyond Good and Evil uh, mm-hmm. sequel, providing Rayman did okay. I remember. And then, uh, then you know, they're like, now make a sequel because it did okay, instead of making Beyond Good and Evil like he wanted. Yeah, I remember seeing the Beyond Good and Evil 2 trailer, and I know that a lot of people love that game. I never actually finished it. I, I got it on Xbox Live once. and then I played the it. demo that was on the PlayStation Store. I didn't really like it, and I did play the demo back in the PS2 as well. I played I played a little bit, and it was decent. I didn't, but I mean, it wasn't it wasn't anything that I want to finish. But I can understand why people would really love it, and, and he should have gotten the opportunity to to make the second one. There was a trailer, um, but that. And that leads at, uh, leads us to a question. But well, do you want to, uh, do you want to talk about it now, or do you want to just save it? I'd say save it. Okay, we're gonna save it. Do you want to take this next one? Ratchet and Clank: uh, Full Frontal Assault Speed version has been delayed again. Um, the game was originally supposed to be a cross buy, cross play title, so buy it on your V to play it on your PS3 and vice versa. Um, but it got delayed right before the console versions release, so it's now being released in spring 2013. So whatever, whenever that quarter ends. Yeah, and and I think it's good to uh, I think it's worth it to note that uh, spring 2013 are in quotes. There is like there's no set release date. There's no 
promise that it will actually come out in spring. So it's just, they're just saying, well, it's basically them saying we're shooting for spring right now. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't. I haven't played a whole lot of Ratchet and Clank, so I don't know. I, I heard that Full Frontal Assault was just like subpar. Like, oh yeah, that's that's okay. <laughs> Honestly, any of the Ratchet and Clank games are outside the you know, the core games. I f- I find to be subpar. Besides, uh, the, the um, like the like the future trilogy and the original the future trilogy. trilogy and the original PS2 HD collection now. Yeah, yeah. I've been pl- I I need to get back to the first one. Uh, so Assassin's Creed Three DLC, The Tyranny of King Washington, has got release dates for its three parts. So part one, called The Infamy, will launch on February nineteenth. Uh, part two, the betrayal, will be March nineteenth, and part three, the redemption, will release on April twenty third. Uh, the story re- will revolve around an alternate history in which George Washington falls to temptation of power, crowning himself king. Players will work to dethrone Washington to restore political balance. Sounds a bit ridiculous. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, if you ask me, Assassin's Creed is always ridiculous. This like, is true. <laughs> I, I am not into Assassin's Creed at, at all. I don't like the series. I played the first one on Xbox, and, and then, you know, I mean, you have to climb towers to kind of unlock missions. Yeah, they unlock, yeah, the map unlock, the, unlock the map and whatnot. And after a while, they stop marking towers on the map. So you have to find the on the one tower in the map that you haven't climbed yet. So like I like when they finally started doing that, I was like, I don't. What do I do? And so I climbed one of the towers. It, I'd al- I'd apparently already climbed it because nothing happened. And I was like, I don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just stopped playing. And then I tried two because I heard two was um, was much better, but uh, I couldn't stick with it. I just didn't care anymore. Yeah. But uh, if you like Assassin's Creed 3 and you need a reason to j- uh, dive back into it, next week, part one of Tyranny of King Washington. So, there you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's next? Uh, well, Activision's acquired the video game rights to the new Ninja Turtles TV show seen on Nickelodeon. Uh, the publisher plans to release a trilogy of games, the first of which should release this summer to unspecified platforms. It sounds a lot, you know, it's Ninja Turtles. So I'm, have, you, yeah. have you ever seen that show, though? Not the new one, no. I watched an, a one episode. I, ha- I and it's it's one of those where I'd like to watch more. It's it's very strange though the 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 lineup that they've got for um, for voices like Donatello and Michelangelo are like relatively unknown. Yeah. But but um, for Leonardo, it's Jason Biggs, and uh, and um, Raphael is Sean Astin. So you have Samwise Gamgee as Raph and. Uh, an American Pie is 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 Leonardo. Yeah, <laughs> and also uh, Mae Whitman is April. I think Activision are smart to acquire it because isn't there a uh, movie in the works as well? I have no idea. Um, I'm trying to think who it is. I think um, they're changing it to they're not mutants, so they're actually aliens. I'm trying to think which director. Oh yeah, doing. yeah, that's right. Michael Michael Bay wanted Michael to do Bay, that. Michael Bay, that's it. I think they were talking about that, and I I haven't heard anything about it for like maybe six months at least. But it suggests that some there are there are some sort of um, plans to reboot Ninja. So I think Activision's just been on top of that and making it, hoping that Ninja Turtles is going to come back, yeah. putting their money into it if they've bought the right. So, uh, video game rights, at least. Here's a piece of news that I find really, really exciting for me, at yeah. least. And I'm sure for a lot of other people, but I mean, I'm a huge Batman fan. Uh, John K. Martin, he's a member of the Time Warner Management. He confirmed in a, in a, in an investor call that a new Batman Arkham title will be released this year. The transcript for the call reads, uh, quote, We also have a strong games release this year, which will include the next release in the Batman Arkham franchise. So all in all, we expect Warners to post another very strong year in 2013. And I would say, unquote, that um, that it would be a strong year with a with a Batman game because Batman only sells. It is. It's amazing, especially yeah, well since our, the surprise hit of Arkham Asylum. Definitely. I'm I'm interested to see where they're going to go with it. I, I heard like a lot of stories like maybe it's going to be a Silver Age prequel or something like that. I don't know what they're going to do, but. As long as I get some more Batman. Definitely, yeah. I'm worried, though. You usually would have announced such a big title by now. Right. I mean, even GTA, who, you know, always leads up, you know, only gives you a year for the biggest well, title. You'd think 
And if they say it's 2013, yeah, uh, maybe they're waiting for E3. I would say, yeah, I would always say with stuff like this that you wait till E3 and check it out. So they'll be teasing it beforehand, but yeah, that's when they'll yeah, show it maybe. off. But I don't know, it just seems, a, I don't know, it's a bit worrying. Now, as much as I love Arkham City, I, I want to request one thing as far as this third Arkham title is concerned, is that you had so many villains in Arkham City, and that was fine, that was fun. Yeah. But a lot of them got shafted. Yes, they did. Like, like Two-Face is one of the best villains that Batman has. Shows up at the very beginning, Batman kicks his ass, and then he disappears, unless you have the Catwoman DLC, and then he's at the very end. And then even then, like, Catwoman kicks his ass, and then that's it. And even more so, like, the kind of um, the side villains that were... Well, the villains that were put into side quests, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, Mad Hatter really, was the best one. I, I really like the Hush uh, side quest. Hush really was great. Know. If it's going to be a prequel, then we won't. Then. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're going to have more... If you're going to have a lot of villains in there, yeah, try to flesh them out again. Like, much like Arkham Asylum, you know, we had Scarecrow and Joker and Killer Croc, and we all got, and they all got a piece of the spotlight. Yeah. You know, so get, you know, I mean, flesh them out like, uh, like Penguin and, and Freeze were. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, the first, you were right, the first game did it well. I mean, it had quite a few villains, but they all had a decent portion of the game yeah. dedicated to them as well. And don't just throw them in to throw them in. Just yeah. to be like, hey, look who's in the game. Just be like... Well, like you said with Two-Face, I mean, he makes an appearance at the start and at the very end. If that, yeah. that's only if you bought the DLC. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm excited for it. I, 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 I want to see what they do with it, because, I mean, after Arkham City, what do you do, really? Mm, it's going to... Uh, but they said they are Arkham franchise, so... Whether so, gonna... it's, either a pre- it's either a prequel or a sequel. That's so, it. Yeah. If it's a sequel, where do you go from there? You know, seriously. I mean, even that's... if it's a prequel, I mean, they can't. If it's just they can't, you know, have Arkham something with the Arkham name and then yeah. have a city again, or because because uh, yeah. Arkham's Arkham Planet. Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be tough. I think they put themselves in the corner of the brand name. Yeah, it's tough. They, uh, but um, let's move on from that because uh, it's time for our occasional reminder. Or update, or Last Guardian update. <laughs> uh, Fumito Ueda uh, posted on his website that he is still in charge of The Last Guardian, and it is still being worked on. And he also asserts that it is Sony's job to announce details of the game, not his. Mm. Which I which I thought was kind of like shady. It's like, like, it ain't my job. It's, it's only my game, but it ain't my job to tell you what's up. Um, but he does add that we should keep an eye out for their uh, for Sony's official announcement, which leads me to believe that this could mean the Last Guardian of the PS4 title. It could be, or it could be, you know, Sony always come out with, and look at the PlayStation 2, some of its strongest, biggest games came out just as, it, you know, as a new yeah. next generation started. I, I saw a tweet earlier. Yeah. Um, and it said, uh, and, and it really put things into perspective for me. It, it, they said, if The Last Guardian is a PS4 title, that means that Team Eco went a whole generation, a whole console generation without making a game, or without publishing a game. It, it doesn't reflect well on their studio. Not really. I mean, they only have two games to their name at this point. Yeah. And both of them are PS2 games. Mm-hmm. And the only, and the only way they could make any more money was from that, that HD collection that they got a couple of years ago. It seems like Duke Nukem syndrome, you know. Yeah. I think they were given too much leeway. They weren't given a solid, you know, you have to complete this game by then. And I just... mean, we haven't seen a single thing from Last Guardian except for that one trailer several years ago. Yeah. Like, not even anything. It's it's worse than Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen. We've seen more from that game than we have from this one. I don't know what's happening with that project. I, I was excited a very long time ago. Now it's just like whenever, <laughs> whenever you're ready, man. Um, if you're also, I, I should have, I should have mentioned this after Batman because this is also DC Comics. But if you are a DC Comics fan, uh, you are obviously probably excited, a very excited for Injustice: God Among Us, which is going to be out. I believe it's April 16th. Um, 
if you don't know what that is, it's it's basically a, a fighting game uh, between DC Universe. It's made characters. by the uh, Mortal Kombat team as well, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. And it's and it's much more much more dark than you know Mortal Kombat versus DCU. It looks it, it looks way cooler. Way, uh, way more violent. I saw some of the cinematic, like, uh, they have the finisher type moves, but during fights, kind of like specials, they look pretty yeah, good. It looks really awesome. Um, two characters were announced for Injustice this week. You will be able to fight as Aquaman and Captain Marvel. Uh, some people don't know what, who Captain Marvel is. Uh, he's also known as Shazam. Billy Batson is a small child that meets a wizard. I believe the wizard's name is Shazam. And, it, and when, and, he bestowed upon him this power where he could say, he could scream out Shazam and turn into this big guy, Captain Marvel, just in case he didn't know who that was. That's, uh, what I was trying to tell you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, those two characters will be in that game. Tom, you were saying earlier that, that you were like, Uncle Man, that's not a character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just an embarrassment of a character. I mean, they got. Oh. You're still thinking like Aquaman, like like the like Aquaman like video game. It was such Aquaman. a sh- no, it's just a stupid character. I mean, you, he, was, he even gets made fun of in the comics. So. so you know what you need to do is you gotta go up to uh to your local comic shop, and you gotta find Jeff Johns' uh recent uh, Aquaman run. There's a there's a novel. It's got uh, I can't remember like the the subtitle, but uh, but Aquaman's on there and he's holding his uh, his trident and shit and he's and, and his hair's waving back in the in in the water and he's I oh, got this menacing look on his face and it's and it's really and it's a really cool book. I I read it and and there's even a, a line where like he's in a diner and, and and he orders like a salmon or something like that and they're like you can't do that. You t- uh, don't you talk to fish? And he goes I don't talk to fish. So, uh, 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 Jeff Johns knows how to make Aquaman look cool. Yeah. So, if, you, if you're still like, Aquaman's a joke, pick up that book. It's really good. And you'll be like, you know what? Aquaman is pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, last piece of news. Big news. Today. Recent today news. This is, this is in today's news. Well, if he, when if he is. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> this is probably going to go up tomorrow. So, so, yesterday, February 13th. Uh, 2013. Uh, Naughty Dog has announced that The Last of Us will be delayed until June 14th worldwide. They released the following statement, quote, As a team, we pride ourselves on setting a very high-quality bar for every aspect of our games. Gameplay, story, art, design, technology, and more. We want to make sure The Last of Us raises that bar even further for ourselves and, most uh, most importantly, our fans. As we enter the final phase of development for The Last of Us, we came to realize just how massive Joel and Ellie's journey is. But instead of cutting corners or compromising our vision, we came to the tough decision that the game deserved a few extra weeks to ensure every detail of The Last of Us was up to Naughty Dog's internal high standards. End quote. Now, just like I said last week about the GTA V delay, I was disappointed. And like I said last week, I still trust them. I, I mean, and I said that too, I believe. I trust them. It's, it, you can't help but be disappointed. No. That's gonna true. happen. Especially I'm not, if you have a pre-order on. And I'm not gonna be like one of the, well this is bullshit, I better see another trailer, I better see some box art, I better get a, I better get, I better you know, get all some the, free stuff. I better get some free DLC! You know, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna cancel my pre-order! I'm not gonna do that. Cause I really wanna play Last of Us. Yeah. I'm, uh, uh, at this point, it's like I said last well, last week. I'd rather have a great game later than a crappy game now. So all I'm hoping at this point is that Bioshock Infinite doesn't get delayed again because I just want at least one game that I have reserved to come out on time. Uh, at least it's coming out during the summer. I mean, yeah. <laughs> think about GTA. Oh, it's the worst time for it to come out after the time we got you know months I'm, of possible free time <laughs> i'm actually fortunate that i'm not reviewing it because because i wanted to review it eventually uh, i wanted to review it originally is what i meant to say but um but josh Mobley got it instead um but uh the release date that it's got pushed to it's a friday and uh the week after i mean i don't know how long the game is i don't know how long it's going to take me but the week after that is uh, a friend of mine's wedding so uh. i'm glad that i didn't i don't have to 
worry about the uh, about the review and the wedding at the same time. Um, yeah, that's all the news that we have for today. So yeah, for our main segment, we're going to do something uh, different this week in which we've uh, had guests on the show to talk about Nino Cooney and uh, Sly 4, so new uh, releases exclusive to PlayStation. And uh, the reason I'm not in it is because I've not played either of the games, so I think it'd be more productive. Uh, also, I hadn't played the games either, but we, we wanted to have... Uh, we talked to Joshua Mobley and Nate Gamer, both editors of BGU.TV, uh, they had both played Nino Kuni and Josh had played Sly 4. Actually, Josh reviewed both games. You can find both of those reviews on VGU.TV. Um, but the other reason that you weren't on there was, and I say this in there, is that, uh, we were working with three different time zones and we just couldn't make it work. No. So I just kind of pulled them aside and, and we recorded the audio separately. And so it's going to be inserted in here. So it's, so, Without further ado, let's cut to that recording and and talk and do that re- that interview right now. What's up, guys? I'm here with Josh Mobley and Nate Gamer, and we're going to talk about two PlayStation exclusives that just came out. First of all, we're going to kick it off with a discussion about Nino Cooney because that came out first. Josh and Nate, both of you have been playing Nino Cooney. I haven't because mm-hmm. I don't have any money. And I'm, I have, I don't have enough time to play a, a big old JRPG like, I like that kind of game. You do. So can you? You just don't have the money. All you need to do though is go to a sperm bank. I might, I might consider that. You could probably <laughs> afford Nino Cooney then, and let me tell you, it is well worth it. I don't know if my girlfriend would be very, uh, very happy with that decision, but I, uh, but don't think I haven't considered it. She doesn't own your semen. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, she does. Anyway, I guess. anyway, um, Tom can't be here because uh, with you guys in the show right now, it's it, we would be dealing with three different time zones, and we just couldn't make it work. So uh, it's just me, and I'm kind of I'm kind of gonna let you two talk mostly. So and because you know more about the games than I do, I haven't played them. Uh, Which can I spoil? I mean, gosh. Um, I know Josh. I was, you just got the the boat, right? Yeah, I'm not it's very far. Say, <laughs> it's fair to say. I would say. Well, how how many hours have you been gotten into, Josh? Ten. Ten. So, so I'm I like a say, fourth through the game, I think. Right? So it's really, like a forty uh, hour. So really, game. it's like you're about a fourth of the way through the game. I would say. I mean, my clock is at seventy hours, but I've left it on a lot. So it's hard to say how much I've actually played. I'd say probably in the 40-hour mark, and I'm at what I presume to be the final boss. Uh, fought it twice, haven't beaten it. So that's so, something. That's that's good, you know. So if Josh, if Josh is um, 10 hours into Nino Kuni, then translating that from R- and JRPG time to regular game time, you're only two hours into it. More so, I mean, I would say that I would say that don't spoil anything for Josh, and that's about as much as you can spoil. Okay, yeah, no, I'd say that's fair because the point that Josh is at right now is essentially the the part in the game where the world has opened up to you, and you've gotten all the different mechanics that the game has to offer. Like you can finally catch familiars, and so the, the tutorial ends at ten hours. No, the <laughs> tutorial ends around like. Six or seven. Like when you get to the volcano, that's when you can start catching, and that's around right. like five hours in. Well, yeah, that's not like Final Fantasy thirteen. That's true, and I wouldn't say it's so much a tutorial, so much as they've got all these different game elements that they need to add, and it's more like a Mega Man style tutorial where they are just like basically throwing you right into it. Mm-hmm. You know, I at least I didn't ever feel like I was too hindered by a wall of text or anything like that. Would you, Josh? Um, I felt like in the the Mujesty area, there was a lot of text. In uh, a, a moon? Yeah, yeah well, that, that place with all the milk. Yeah, Alma Moon. Yeah, that was, yeah. That, there was a lot of text there. I felt like there could have been some more uh, dialogue, which shows you how spoiled I am. But, Speaking uh, of dialogue, before you guys get dig deep into discussion about, you know, all kinds of stuff, uh, 
there's a lot of people that don't know what Nino Kuni is even about. Like I, I barely know what it's about. I played the demo and I, and it's very much like, like Josh's when he finds a game that he doesn't like or a show that he doesn't like. I played, uh, I played one, one half of the demo and lost the battle and was like, I get it and deleted it. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll try to explain it as best I can without spoiling anything. Imagine that you're hanging out with your buddy and you guys decide to like take, a car out for a spin. Oh, we're going all the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you take this car out for a spin, but you get into a horrible accident. So, like, you're actually fine. Like, you get out just fine. But your mom showed up on the scene just before the revelation that you're fine actually happened. So she's, like, thinking you're in horrible danger. So all of a sudden, her heart just stops. And so this one lady's like, oh, she always had a bad heart. And and your mom is dead from then on. Um, well, I and, suppose I could be much darker in that she didn't actually get hit and mangled by. Well, I mean, by, she, or, she uh, jumps in the water to like save him. Because mm-hmm. yeah, and and then uh, after but that, she has kind it, of huh? like a heart attack, sort of. Mm-hmm. Like she yeah, has like heart disease or something. Yeah. You know? oh, it's so strange. Yeah, but, but here's the thing is you spend a bunch of days crying in your room when you're cuddling like your favorite stuffed animal that your mom gave you and you cry on it and all of a sudden it becomes this Welsh like freaky I always thought it was Scottish. It's totally Welsh. I don't, it's it's one of those. It's like <laughs> And his name is Drippy, right? It's the yeah. it's the guy with the lantern on his nose. Drippy yeah. is a beast. Love Drippy, Drippy is Easily the best character in that game, I would say. I, none of the other ones hold a candle to him. But I'm. Ch- you know what? I just remembered where I actually got. I got to the town full of fairies. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah. T. He looked. Tea. Yeah. Drippy looks about as fun a and character like, as like as like uh, Billy Crystal's <laughs> flame guy was in Howl's Moving Castle. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this game isn't really dark pretty lighthearted. Right. The darkest thing that you see is freaking Shadar, which is like one of the villains. Shadar is awesome. Yeah. Though. What is Shadar? <laughs> he's he has he's an awesome Darth voice. Vader. Yeah, he's yeah. he's like a witch version of Darth Vader. Oh and, wow. Yeah, I know he's great. He's like evil looking, has clearly dark evil powers. I mean, he's a, he's a trope and a dark evil voice. So it just his voice. Raw. Ah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's, it's like I, can't. I will find this boy, this boy Oliver. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really tight, actually. Yeah, yeah he's no, pretty he's... raw. Now, isn't isn't the uh, the game the game's cutscenes uh, done by Studio Ghibli? Or Ghibli? <laughs> Some Wait, of how them. do you pronounce that? It's Ghibli, Ghibli. I'm pretty sure. I think it's Ghibli. Studio G. See, Studio G. They're uh. Yeah, well, it's like some of the cutscenes are in game, like you know, with 3D. Because I mean, not every part of the game is voice acted. There's some text in some Ugh. places, and the characters will like m- you know move around like they're animated. Yeah, I, I played a little. Local. I played a little in the demo. I played a yeah, and, and a, sh- a short battle. Some of the, I mean, yeah. So some of the, some of the. Um, it's stuff more cartoonish in game, and then when you get to like kind of a s- more special cutscene it's uh mm. it, it's animated like a mm. lot most of the stuff in the beginning is actually animated like when you're uh you know going out your buddy like built the car and shit like you know you go out and the part like where you drive the car is all animated part where your mom dies is all animated we're crying in your room like half of that's pretty much animated like uh there, there's a lot of stuff um, most of it is at the beginning <laughs> though i would say like 90 percent of it happens in the first three hours yeah. That I've seen, cause, yeah, there's, I've seen probably grand total 40 <laughs> minutes maybe of animated cutscene stuff. Yeah, there's not too much. So it's like, don't get super hyped, but, uh, don't expect there to be like hours of, you know, animated in there. It's pretty special when you get one, you know? Yeah, like, what oh. there is is pretty cool. My favorite one, I'd say, is probably the one where Oliver casts Gateway for the first oh, time to travel to the other world. It was actually mm-hmm. in my video review. There yeah. is. There is a video review of Nino Kuni up on VGU.tv. 
Uh, Josh, you did the video review. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you and did I, the, I did, did the, the, uh, the first time you cast Gateway in the in the uh, which is a spell that you can go between the uh, the real world. Well, not really the real world, but your world and the other world, I should say. With this spell called Gateway, and the first time you cast it, you do it in like the town square in the middle of the night. And uh, I did th- th- that sequence is actually animated, but but the uh, transition into the story segment of the video review is that scene, like the first oh, wow. time you cast Gateway. It makes it really disappointing when you cast Gateway. Yeah, later the time, and it's just like a light beam. <laughs> it's just a light beam. Like, it goes pew, and you're like, well. That wasn't as cool as the first time yeah. I did it. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. the first time I did it, there was, like, a giant door and, like, a gateway, like, a whole hallway I had to walk yeah, through. Yeah, there was, like, a staircase and everything. <laughs> yeah. It looks like More an extended just... light. <laughs> now it's just... It looks like an extended limit break. <laughs> yeah, now it's just... You're like, oh. <laughs> guess I'm going to the other world. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is happening. This is sure special. <laughs> so... Uh, I've been hearing this game compared to uh, a combination of the Tales series and Pokemon. Could you kind of elaborate on that? I mean, I, all, yeah. I obviously I see that the familiars are kind of the Pokemon in this equation. Yeah, you get um, like the main characters that you come across that join your party, uh, ha- like have their own kind of base familiar. I don't actually know if you can swap those ones out. Can you? I discovered that you can, in fact, swap them out. Yes. Okay. I don't know why you'd want to, because they're like the best ones. But well, uh, not all of them are. The ones that uh, Oliver and Esther start with are really good. You'll definitely want to keep those ones. But um, Swain is going to be the next guy you get. <laughs> I already I mean, got Swain. Oh, you already got Swain. Yeah. Okay. Well, I perfect. got the boat. So. I mean, that's still early on. Figured yeah. that's not spoilers. The fourth guy, we'll keep that the a mystery. Oh, is there a fourth guy? Spoilers! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Swain, or, yeah, Swain's, uh, Hurley is just not, it doesn't have very good stats, I'd say, even after its full, or its third evolution. Because all of them evolve, by the way. And on the third evolution, you get a choice between one of two different kinds. For each monster, it's, ah, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, man, Mighty is is my favorite. I love that little guy. Obviously, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's all, all, Oliver's first familiar. But um, the reason it's like Pokemon is exactly like when you get Esther, who's the the girl, like the second character. She has like a um, what is it a uh, a loon or a loon? It's a penguin. Oh, no, yeah, a harp, a harp or something. Thing, yeah, like, and uh, basically, what happens is when you're fighting monsters, sometimes uh, it doesn't happen every like. It's not like Pokemon where you can just say, "Yeah, I'm gonna throw a Pokeball at this." It's like it just it happens every so often. It's like you have to know when it happens. Uh, you have the chance to tame like a monster you're fighting, and then you have to switch to Esther and like serenade it with a song to capture it and then you can use it you can like you can swap familiars out they all level up together uh, you have to name them that's an important part of the whole <laughs> gaming of familiar process yeah. is that they all have to be named and what you did you say you didn't choose any names uh, no i just let them have their name because i don't i, I never <sighs> duped up on familiar no I, always go, I don't have this one so i capture it well, I mean, if you hit triangle, it's cer- it cycles through different like randomizations. Ah, uh, I thought they yeah. like had their own set names. That's why I was like, oh no, I named my might or Oliver Starter Ganondorf because <laughs> yeah, it's a badass name. <laughs> uh, that was pretty awesome. No, I didn't. Do but that. yeah, it is. It is annoying that you don't have any option to like throw a pokeball, so to speak. Like basically, you kill a monster and there's, I don't know, what, like a 2% chance that they'll suddenly fall in love with you or something, like hearts appear over their head, and, yeah, and only then can you serenade them. And it's a 100% chance that you'll actually catch them if you're given the option, yeah. at least from what I've seen, but it's just, it, uh, the Pokeball way is a lot better, a, a lot better way of doing things. Totally. But... I mean, as far as other Pokemon tropes go, Nino Kuni kind of knocks it out of the park. Like, 
just ah, the way it controls and everything is a lot more action packed. Although, and, like <laughs> like you said, the third uh, branching evolution, you can only get one of them. You know. Yeah, exactly. So like, you have to make that choice, and ah, it's so unfortunate that there's no battle your friends online kind of thing for this, because that would ah, that would make me go nuts. You should be able to trade and battle online. That's that's. Yeah. important when you're catching monsters. I, th- I think they were they probably weren't thinking about that at all. <laughs> yeah. Because there have been other games that have let you kind of like fight your friends and they haven't really been that great. Like uh the original Golden Sun on GBA had like a thing where you could link up and, and fight your friends and it wasn't that great. Like I don't know. But it, it is that was- kind of different. Like you, everybody's party is gonna be kind of the same in a Golden Sun game, you know? Yeah. I mean that's it's way different in Nino Kuni. Like I, I, I'm guessing that my team will be completely different to yours once you've gotten to the end of the game. I mean, for the first few hours, everybody's going to be the same, but like, oh, there's a lot of variety that builds up later on. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I have one one more question for me. I, I I'm I was actually asking a friend. I know that he's been playing Nino Kuni. If he if he had any questions. Which I should have done earlier. I didn't think about it, but um, if he doesn't, then that's fine. Uh, but my question is: there is a it, it, the full title of the game is Nino Kuni: The Wrath of the White Witch. Can you tell me a little bit more about this White Witch? She's a not without spoiling anything. Not without spoiling anything. I mean, she's she appears in like the beginning cutscenes and stuff, but you don't know anything about her until way late in the game. But no, I will I, say that her I don't story really know is, much about her at the moment. Her story is probably one of the cooler stories of the game, although I actually think Shadar's story is a lot cooler. Shadar both- is just... Co- oh, Shadar's cooler than the White Witch, in my opinion. Well, one, after you defeat Shadar, you like find out his backstory and everything, and it's pretty sweet. Granted, I haven't you know, beaten the White Witch yet. Surprise! She's these, the final boss. I'm sorry. All these bosses <laughs> have, uh, have backstories, huh? Oh, yeah. Totally. And actually, all of those backstories are somewhat alluded to in the fairy tales in the Wizard's Companion. Like, there are all these different fa- fairy tales in the Wizard's Companion, and they've all got, you know, their <laughs> cute little lessons you can learn from them. Which you can but flip I've, through every page. Yeah, wow. you can flip through every... And, oh, it's, it's so immersive to be able to read this fairy tale, and you really don't know what it's talking about, and then later on you're like, oh, that was in that fairy tale I read. That's really cool. And Oh, that kind of stuff happened to me like seven or eight times at least after reading those fairy tales because, yeah, you got to read those fairy tales is all I'm saying. Anybody that's playing it and not reading that book is an idiot. It well, adds thanks, so Nate. much. <laughs> Josh, Josh is like, ain't nobody got time for that. I, I, I barely have time to put into the game, like... I mean, you're all more only time like 10 into hours it. into it. Well, yeah, but I want to put more time into it, but it's like, so it's like, there's still consuming. so much stuff coming out, and I'm I'm a really busy dude, so yeah, yeah. So if you guys have no more uh, no more to say on Nino Kuni, I would like to I would like to hit up the the next PlayStation exclusive that just came out uh, just last week, and that is. Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. Oh yeah. Which which Josh you also reviewed and that went up today on BGU. Yeah, it went up late cuz I've been sick. <laughs> but um yeah, so Sly Cooper Thieves in Time fourth game um freaking great. Uh it had some things that I mean it feels old because it's kind of just it's it's made to be like the older games, which isn't a bad thing, but it when you play it, you, you feel like you're playing a PS2 game that's got PS3 graphics, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, it's it's really good, and the characters are charming. All the original voice actors came back, except for Carmelita. They actually got somebody that knows so how to better. freaking. I don't know if it's one of the pre- previous Carmelitas. I have no idea, it but I know it sounds like it could be the first one. It might be the first one, but I know for a fact it is not the third because she was terrible. She um, was very stiff yeah. and like trying too hard to get that accent going. Sly Cooper, <laughs> I am going to take you to prison. Like, ah, oh, 
It's terrible. But uh, uh I played the uh I played the demo, and there was a great Back to the Future reference at the end of it. Yeah, so the demo, I'm guessing, is just the very first area, right? Where yeah, the very first heist. area. Yeah. 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 That actually, it's a that's lot a of fun, and, and when I played it, when I played it, I was just like, oh my god, it feels so nice to be in control of Sly, uh, Sly Cooper again. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. I mean, uh, it plays just like the older games. Uh, like, a lot of those abilities... Um, came back like the ones that you buy there's a lot more going on in it uh it's they went back to what made sly cooper 2 great and they kind of expanded on it which is good because i thought sly cooper 3 was kind of the worst one even though like mm-hmm. you know it's good but it's it's good but it's not nowhere as good. near as good as a two and one um now see that, that actually reminds me before you go on uh tom like i said he couldn't be here but he does have a couple of questions about sly 4 mm-hmm. uh he says how does it compare to the original trilogy and does it stand up to sly 2 yeah it stands up to sly 2 uh in terms of like the entire game i don't know because i haven't beat it yet but uh mm-hmm. i mean yeah it's much better than three I'll tell you that much uh it's better i'd say it's better than one but i don't i i don't know if it's better than two yet not sure, right. but um, I mean it's you really good. It first. Also, the um, all the all the original three games had the kind of they weren't animated cutscene, like they weren't animated between the levels. They were like semi animated, kind of static images. They were kind of static, but they moved a little bit. Yeah, just um, a little bit. This time it's fully animated, which is just amazing. I freaking love it. Um. It makes me want them to make a Sly Cooper cartoon, even though, like, nobody would watch it. I would. Oh, I would watch it well, so I mean, much. I would, yeah, but, you know. I never turn on, like, you know, I got satellite on, in, in my house, and I actually have to figure out how to hook it up to the new TV that I set, uh, set up. But um, I, w- I never use it, but I would totally try and hook it up and figure it out just to watch a Sly Cooper cartoon. Yeah. There's also... um. If anyone, I, I don't know if this is in the game, but before the game came out, they released like a six minute animated prequel kind of thing. And like, kind of like on, Sly Cooper in five minutes. Um, no, just kind of, I mean, a little, but it was, it, <laughs> it kind of just felt like a little mini episode, like escapade of something that would happen in the universe. Sort of. Um, Reacquainting players with the characters. Yeah, I mean, it... it, uh, Like a short, if you will. But, Mm -hmm. um... It's it's like they're they're going on a heist on some air float thing, and Carmelita's, like, all tied up. And then Sly, like, is gonna rescue her, but then he just keeps her there. (laughs) Because he's like, <laughs> he doesn't want to get caught. But then she gets out, of course, because she's Carmelita and she's like kind of a badass. And, you know, it, it it's fun, you know. But, um, that basically, that's the same animation that you see in between the levels. And, uh, what's good, what's also good about it is, is it's not all about Sly. It's, it's kind of about everybody. It's a very, uh, Sly and Carmelita story also. Um, and then you get to, you get to meet all of his ancestors, which are fun to play as too. All of his ancestors have their own abilities and their own, uh, things that make them special. So. This is the first I've heard of this. Yeah, so you get to play as his ancestors also and. Someone didn't read the review. <laughs> I don't even know how to the read it. The first ancestor you get to play of, <laughs> the, yeah, and he's writing. The, the the first uh, ancestor you get to play as is uh, Ryuichi, and it it's his, he's from feudal Japan. So you get to go to feudal Japan, and uh, cool. He basically he was the inventor of sushi, but he's also a ninja. <laughs> yeah, and uh, much like Marty McFly is the inventor of the skateboard. Yeah, so he he basically um, he was in the Thievius Raccoonus or whatever. He's the one who invented like the. The thing you do when you jump and push circle to go on point. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the one who invented that technique. So, um, he has a thing where he can jump from one of those points to another point, like just leap really quickly to him. So you have to do a lot of things where you jump through lasers really quickly and stuff to do that. So he's, he's more of a platforming character. The level I'm in now, which I think I'm about to beat is 
the uh, the Old West. So it's like 1880 in the in the Old West, and you're playing as you're helping uh, his ancestor Tennessee Cooper. He's kind of like an outlaw, you know. And his cane is also like a rifle. So his ability is like you hold L1 and you go into like a third person shooter mode where you can you can shoot enemies and stuff. With bullets? Oh God, so yeah, cool. with bullets. Like, oh my uh, God. It's pretty, it's pretty rad. And then it, when There's you get legislation against that kind of thing from happening, <laughs> not back in that, uh, not back in that day, not well, in 1880. True. They could have whatever kind of video games they wanted in the old west. <laughs> that's right. Um, but basically, like, <coughs> yeah, the your ancestors all have abilities, and you get to play as Carmelita a little bit, and you get to play, you know, I get to play as everybody else too, but. Um, you get to do all the crazy stuff that, you know, you did in the other slide games, like drive the RC cars and stuff, uh, put on disguises. They did a really cool thing with the disguises this time, though. It's not like, oh, I just put on a costume and walk past all the guards. It's like, they actually have a, have like a function. So, the costume you get in Feudal Japan is like this big guard's armor, but it's resistant to fire, so you have to walk through a lot of fire, and you have to wear the costume, and then during the boss battle, you have to, like, deflect fireballs, and you have to use the shield on that armor to do it, and then, like, get out of the armor to run at the boss and stuff. Um, so they did, a, like, a really good job of mixing up right. the gameplay a little more to make it feel a little more fresh. But, uh, and then the, the costume you get in the Old West is, like, a prison costume, and you have one of those big chain balls that, you know, they would tie to your ankle so you couldn't escape. Um but you carry it around and then you throw it and smash through walls. So you have to smash through like a lot of walls and signs and stuff in the old West. And, uh, Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So that's what happened to all those windows and signs. I know. Yeah. People were just like, I'm breaking out of prison. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds like it really holds up to the old ones. And I, I'm personally really excited to play it. My question though, before we move off of that topic, because okay. because Nate's been a little quiet because he hasn't played Sly, and I did just get a couple of Emilio Kunin questions, so I thought we'd run back to that. But before we do, my question for Sly Cooper is, how are the trophies? <laughs> Knew it was coming. They are hard. No, I'm kidding. They're not hard. Uh, they're <laughs> pretty freaking easy. Uh, um, Another platinum? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, there's only like 30 trophies in it. Uh, and most of them are like, beat the level so, some of them yeah, are so some of them are, are like complete this specific mission doing this and you can replay all the missions like from your base so right. it's not really a big deal and then and then of course it's like get all the they brought the bottles back from two oh, man. so you have to get all the bo- you have to get they kind of combined it with one in a sense so you know how in one you got all the bottles in the stages and then you could go open the safe at the end of the level um, yeah. they kind of did that with this, but they went the two route where it's like you get all the bottles and then you go find the safe in the stage, like in the open world stage. It's, there's a safe oh, somewhere and you have to go find it after you get all the bottles. I, I gotta say the bottles, uh, the bottle system in two was a much bigger pain in the ass. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem as bad this time around, but, um, they also have, there's treasures to collect, which in two, they were kind of optional. They were just kind of floating around the world, and if you needed money, you'd like get one, and you had to run back to your base without getting hit <laughs> or dying. They yeah. have that this time around too, but there's only one of that specific thing in the map, and there's like maybe five treasures in the map, and you and you get them all and collect them, and you have like a shelf in your base that showcases all your treasures. So like you know you might. Get uh, and you get money for them too, but like once you get it, it that's it. It's in your collection. It's not like something you go back to. It's like an actual collectible you have to get. So, uh, but I mean, those shouldn't be that hard to find because you can kind of just look on your shelf and be like, "Well, that space is empty. I need to go here to get that one." You know. So I mean, that, that one won't be that bad. Um, that's about it. I mean, there's no difficulty settings in the game that I'm aware of. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's all normal. <laughs> no so, play on hard trophy or anything? Not really. I mean, I don't know how that game could get any harder. It's not really supposed to be hard. It's just supposed to be fun. Yeah. Which it is. Well, that's good. 
eight out of ten. <laughs> That's very good. Um, we're gonna we're gonna dial back over to the Nino Kunin questions since I just got a few. Nino. Um, and give Nate a chance to talk again, uh, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, good old fashioned uh, Albert's question corner. Albert comes in. He's, he, he is he, anything but old fashioned. He, he asks all Albert kinds is of questions. a trend sender. Trend setter. Uh, Albert asked a bunch of questions for the gamer cast, and now he's asking questions for DualShock. Yeah, he, he asked us some he, today. He um he touches. He, we already touched on uh, what you liked and didn't like, and what kind of things you <laughs> you you would like to see Pokemon take from Nino Kuni. Uh, which we actually wrote. Uh, which uh, who wrote that article? Yo, me, Nate Gamer. Nate, you wrote the, an article. What kind of things would you like to see Pokemon take from Nino Kuni? If you want to kind of briefly summarize that, but I think you already did earlier with the battle system and the and the battling people online and whatnot. Well, yeah, wow. that's something I would definitely like to see Nino Kuni take from Pokemon. Wait, huh. it, it, he's asking yeah. basically the opposite of what my article was. Well, I think he, I, I think he's uh, asking the same question. <coughs> so. I mean, if you if you want to touch upon the article okay, for okay, people who so, haven't read it. So the article I wrote was called Six Things That Pokemon Could Learn From Nino Cooney. And uh, I might strain my brain to remember them all just off the just, top of my head. But, uh, if people really want to know, they'll, they'll go to VGU.TV and find that article. And the people really do want to know, and I know that. Yeah. Um, and I want to be able to give them that... <laughs> The option to hear me say it or for them to read it, but you really should read it. Is It's really quite clever. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I think the first thing I had in there was that you get to play as, you know, as Oliver or as Esther or as Swain. Like, you can do combat as these characters instead of entirely relying on the familiars, which... I mean, that's basically what Pokemon does, right? You Sometimes can't... it's nice to just play as the characters because they have like all different spell lists, and they and the your they can't uh, your familiars can't use provisions and stuff, so or like do commands and stuff. Yeah, and uh, and uh, oh, I forget what my second point was there. Oh, don't sweat it. You can, you can just say what you remember and look, and they can check out the article on online. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was another point to being able to play as these characters. Oh, okay, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> Just edit this part out, man. The <laughs> second point that I had was that the, uh, the Wizard's Companion, I kind of touched on this with the fairy tales that they have, but, man, that companion is so cool. It has all the different Page. items you can get. It's got all the different... Well, I, eventually you unlock these pages, but it's got all the different spells and all the recipes. different alchemy recipes, which is kind of weird, because the way alchemy works is, like, you can get recipes in addition to the ones that appear in the book, and, nah, the system for it is kind of janky. You'll find that out once you get to it. Oh, wait, you probably already have that, right, Josh? Yeah, I have the alchemy, alchemy system. That's You have to do the boss battle with the genie, and then you get the alchemy system. Yes, yeah. the genie. The and genie was like really hard, actually. Yeah, I know that genie was really hard. I think I lost to it. I think that was the first I lost time to it I died. at least twice. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of the first times I died in that. But yeah, no, I, I would just like to see a Pokedex that had, you know, all this different stuff from the Pokemon universe. Like, mm -hmm. it'd be great to hear cool backstories about the different gym leaders or. Just whatever, man. Pokemon's a great world. They could have all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, Albert also asks, uh, with its success, uh, should Nino Kuni have a Vita version? Mm. It's got a DS version in Japan. Yeah, but it, it's oh, not really? the same uh, like game, right? It's, it's like its own game. Yeah, it's it's not the same game, obviously. Um, yeah, it's definitely a top-down, kind of isometric-looking thing. I haven't seen too much of it, but it looks like it's still got all the familiar capturing and, and all that razzmatazz. I'm not sure if it's a different story or not, but <laughs> it looked cool. I, I hope they localize that, even though they won't, because it's for the original DS. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he also says, 
what things would you like Nino Cooney to do in a sequel if it had one? I don't know. <laughs> well, you know what I would love is to get rid of the shared health thing. I don't like that. Oh. So I didn't know that that it, your, that it had that. You and your familiars share health. So, like... But you don't share defenses. That's the annoying thing. Yeah. So, you, they don't share stats, but you all share health and MP, which is kind of annoying, but I don't know. I mean, it makes it slightly more, you know, you kind of have to be on your toes, but it, it like, if your familiar dies, it's like you lose. Like, you, you know, you all, you all have the same health bar, and I feel like that's not fair. Like, I should be able to, like... If if one familiar dies, I should be able to just pull out another, you know? I right. agree. I agree completely. But That sounds fair. That is my one gripe with the game. Other than that, I mean it's great, but that's my one gripe. I don't like it. It can be help. it can be kind of nice just because I mean no matter what level your familiar is, Oliver's always gonna be a pretty high level comparatively, and that means he's gonna have a, a higher pool of health. Right, and, much like much like Cloud is always a higher level than any of the other party members. Right, but I mean, if I send in like a level one familiar, it's still going to have you know two hundred or whatever HP, regardless. But the, the problem there is still that it's going to have like zero defense and get hit for like two hundred right off the bat. So that's a problem. They definitely should change it because yeah. they all should they all should just be their own things. And if they die, then well, whatever, they're gone. You got another one. Throw it out. I got, Throw it out. What are you doing? I got two more great questions. Um, the first one I think is a little shorter. The second one, it'll take a little more thought, so we'll start with this one. Do you think people consider it a Pokemon ripoff? I've personally seen it around, you know, people are like, it's just, it's just basically Pokemon. Or, no. he says, do you think people consider it a Pokemon ripoff, or would that be used as an, an argument against it? The wall. <laughs> I don't think it's a Pokemon ripoff. I'm sure no. it takes some inspiration from Pokemon, but it's it's mm-hmm. definitely not a Pokemon ripoff. It's like more it's got more tails like stuff going for it. I mean it's it's its own thing. When you play it, it you kind of feel like it's familiar but it's different, you know. It's different enough to be like it feels like something you never played before. But the story is definitely a lot 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 better. Mm. than anything Pokemon has ever attempted to do. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember any story in any Pokemon game ever. So well, I think that the later Pokemon titles had stories, like kind of better stories, like, you know, with Team Aqua and Plasma and, and other people, you know. But, you know, Red and Blue and Gold and Silver, as far as I know, didn't really have much they of a story. Except kind of like, like, oh, they were in yeah, Rocket Power. They were in stealing pieces of Rocket Power. <laughs> You mean that? Team Rocket? <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> Not the Rocket Power cartoon from Nickelodeon about two kids surfing and skating. <laughs> yeah, it's those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, he asked about post main story activities, but you know, you guys, I don't know, Nate, and like Josh, you're ten hours into it. And Nate, you said that you're kind of stuck on the last boss right now. Uh, so I don't think we're going to touch on that real quick. Co- uh, but uh, this one kind of takes a little more thought, and this will be the last question before we kind of wrap it up and get back to the main show, because this is going to be just inserted into the show for our topic of the week. Um, what was your favorite familiar, and which one would you take as a pet? Mighty. Well, My- Mighty is the uh, first familiar you get uh, is for Oliver, and he's like a little he's like a little knight in overalls. <laughs> and then he, he like when you first summon him, he's like twirling in this bubble, and he's making this face that I always make, and I immediately like fell in love with him. I was like, <laughs> this guy, I was like, I want an avatar of him. But I gotta see a picture of this mighty now. <laughs> he is really great, but I actually have to say my favorite has got to be Captain Whamtastic. Whamtastic. Captain Whamtastic, which is an evolution of the Wambat. <laughs> um, it's really it can either evolve into a vampire bat or a Captain Lamtastic, and the vampire bat. I mean, it's it's your standard bat pair. Whatever, fuck that one. 
Captain Lamtastic is he's got like these this white spandex suit and these giant sunglasses and this little like curl of hair and giant red wings and ah oh, he's actually really good too like attacks really fast has high attack speed learns oh, man. storm elemental attacks I think I am and mostly buffs and debuffs which ah oh, buffs and debuffs they're really they really good against uh, bosses yeah. So, that's probably my favorite one. Captain Whamtastic, which I named Wombo Combo. <laughs> oh my god, man. Okay, uh, one more. Just one more, because this is actually a pretty good question. He just sent it to me. Do you, think it, do you think it being released so early in the year will affect it come Game of the Year time? Will it be a serious contender? Probably yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, totally. But Think about would, what's coming out in this year, though. <laughs> there are a lot. Everybody's gonna out. forget about it, and it's gonna be really sad. But I'd, 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 say, about it. I'd say probably around at least at the late at the earliest or at the latest they'll forget about it by uh, the Last of Us. Yeah, yeah, I mean, probably. There, there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming out this year. GTA is coming out. Bioshock's coming out. Mm-hmm. It sounds like there'll probably be a new Mario coming out at the end of the year. That's 3D. I'm guessing. Mm. Right. Don't don't quote me on that necessarily, but it'll probably happen. And most likely. Yeah. You know, it's just it came out way too early, and I I don't know if it's got a wide enough audience for it to really <laughs> garner any of those achievements, other than best RPG of the year, which it'll probably get across the board at like every site. Because what other RPGs are coming out? Name one. Uh, I can't think of one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there's one. In where uh, oh, yeah. I mean, the JRPGs come out like every other week. But nobody Not can. just JRPG, but what RPGs are coming out this year that you can think of that are like going to be really big? Because most, most of the really big ones uh, are actually games. Other than PC stuff, can't think of anything. All the all the games I have marked on my calendar are, are campaign story uh, campaign story games like Tomb Raider and Metal Gear and all that. I mean, so. I guess Fire Emblem Awakening just came out. And yeah, that's, that's apparently like really great. Yeah, yeah I've heard I'll that's really good. Play that. Okay, that is going to be the last question. Because he tried to ask me another question. I was like, God damn it. But we kind of only touched, uh, touched on it. So, uh, thank you guys. Thank mm-hmm. you, Nate. Thank, thank you, Josh, you. for really being, uh, for being on the, on the show. No problem. And, uh, let's get back to the show. Da-da-da dual shock. All right. I really love doing that interview. The next part of this, of this podcast is a community section where we, uh, we talk about community questions. We have a few questions that have been brought up to us this week. Uh, in our forums. By the way, we do have forums. Go to VGU.TV, you'll find the forums. Yeah, we're in the uh, Sony section, and you'll see a sticky for our show, so just go in there, we'll talk to you there. Yeah, ask us a few questions, or talk to us. We'll be around. Tom's most um, Tom's around mo- uh, more often than I am. I'm I usually kind of peruse the Twitters, but uh, but Tom's mostly on the forums. We've got our first question uh, directed at us is from Hero on our forums. And uh, he says, what one game that was in production but was later cancelled do you wish you'd had a chance to play? Uh, for me, it's hard because, like, a lot of, like, I don't know, I always forget about games uh, or they actually do come out. But I will say this, like, there was, uh, if you remember, if you recall, before we got the Resident Evil 4 that we did get, there is a video floating around on the internet, you can find it somewhere, of a different version of Resident Evil 4. Yeah, is that the version that became Devil May Cry? Uh, no, no, it it was a, uh, it was uh no, because I, I believe uh I don't remember. Anyway, um, there's a video. If if you watch it, it's it's still got the fixed camera angles a little bit. Uh, Leon's walking around this. It looks kind of like a shack, uh, like a a cross between a shack and a mansion. Yeah, it's very dark. There are like knights, uh, uh, knights of armor, uh, suits of armor standing around uh, and uh, can- and like candles and stuff. And he's holding a flashlight. I think he gets attacked by like one or two monsters, but it looks really creepy, really, uh, really tense. And I, as much as I love Resident Evil 4, I like, I like, it's one of my favorite games. I play it like 
15 times at the very least. But I always was curious. I always wanted to see what that game would have been like. I always wanted to see, you know, how good that game would have been. Yeah. So, um, but that's all that I have. Like, I mean, we were talking, that's what, and that was the, that was the question I was, uh, referring to earlier about when we talked about Beyond Good and Evil 2. Oh, uh, right, yeah. But, um, mine's personally is, uh, Battlefront 3. It's a bit of a sore issue with me because I love Battlefront 1. You know, I consumed everything about that game. Same with 2 when that came out. I was so excited for that. And then when 3 was announced, you know, edge of my seat, you know, lapping up every content that was released and then, it got cancelled, and you know, there's loads of things on the web now uh, from Free Radical. People are making it, and all sorts of. Uh, it's just, it was apparently completed pretty much, but uh, LucasArts didn't publish it, and yeah. Free Radical decided that you know that they had brand new technology. You know, you could fly your spaceships from the land battles all the way up into space battles this time, and they said the technology dies with us and uh, yeah so that game was cancelled and oh, it just hurts to this day I remember uh, back in the day you know my brother-in-law he had a he had an original Xbox yeah and I believe he had the first Battlefront We pl- and you know me and my brother and, and him we'd all play together and then he got Battlefront 2 and uh, we, we would play that a lot but the map we always played on I believe it was most Eisley Oh, as the uh, Jedi's, as the Jedi's and the, yeah, and the heroes Sith. and villains. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We always because because uh, we were like, who wants to be some nameless, you know, Soldier. some nameless guy? We just uh, some nameless stormtrooper. I want to play as Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Boba Fett and all sorts. It's awesome. Yeah, it was it was a uh, it was such a fun game, and I I didn't even know that Battlefront T- uh, three got uh, got canceled, but. Yeah. Uh, it sounds amazing, and now I'm kind of sad that it, uh, that it never came out. There's some great videos out there if you should see it. But. There's a, but I know that there's at least one game that everybody can agree on. That's that is probably probably still in production, and maybe it hasn't been canceled, but everybody wants to play it, and that is Half Life Two Episode Three. <laughs> They, I think they failed on the episode, episodic content. I think. I mean, it, I, I, I mean, as much as I don't like Half Life, like I'll admit that two was a, was a pretty decent game, and that that I'd like to see how it ended after episode two, but that never happened. So when they released the orange box, you know, I hooked because I'd never played the Half Life two. I'd never played Half Life two before, so it was all new. That box, great deal when that came out. And you yeah. know, like, oh, when's the next one coming out? Oh, you know. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Apparently. Jeez. Um, we have new, we have other questions, uh, from a friend of mine, uh, his name is Subchalk on the forums, but we all know him as Albert. Uh, he's also, he's also asked a lot of questions on the GamerCast. Uh, and I'm gonna call him Albert, cause that's how I know him. Uh, he says, he says, what exclusive PSN titles that not many people have played are your favorites? Or that you would recommend? So I find this uh, question a bit hard because I've, I mean, the only pl- PlayStation Network titles that I've uh, played and love are uh, kind of popular. I mean, I th- I'd say Wipeout HD maybe. But I think that game gained in popularity ever since the uh, PlayStation Blackout, where they gave it away for free. Right. But um, I think beforehand, it possibly didn't have much hype around it. And- any fans, but that game I, I really enjoy. It's a great, unique racing game. So, what about you? I would say my favorite PSN games to this day are still uh, Shatter and Super Stardust HD. Shatter is basically Brick Breaker. Yeah. Or, or as some people like to know, I know it as Java Noid. Uh, on uh, some of the, uh, I used to play it in high school all the time because mm-hmm. it was like a little flash game, but. Uh, old Nintendo bus might call it uh, Kirby's Block Ball. That was a great game. Um, but, yeah, uh, Shatter was a great game. I loved it to death. And it's got a great soundtrack. Really electronic, kind of spacey, and it's really fun. Uh, hard trophies. But uh, I, I'm, I think I'm, like, missing one. Where you got, it's like call, there's a mode called Boss Rush where you got to try to be the, the bosses in, like, ten minutes. And yeah. that is, like, super hard. But, um... Super Stardust HD is also really cool. It's uh, it's basically like, what was that game? Oh, Geometry Wars. If you know, if you know what Geometry Wars is on the Xbox, Super Stardust is pretty much PlayStation's uh, Geometry Wars. 
there's a, uh, it's just like your little spaceship around this planet and you're shooting all kinds of stuff. You get different upgrades and whatnot. It's, it's really, it's a whole lot of fun and they had a Vita version and like, I remember, uh, Josh got it and he loved it to death. Like it was his first game. <laughs> and it tied him over for, uh, the first couple weeks. Yeah. But, uh, until something good came along. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, those are like the only ones that really spring to mind as far as PSN titles. Um, uh, but he also asks, uh, does it seem that PSN titles don't get a lot of hype? Everyone praised the likes of games such as Limbo, but I haven't heard the same for exclusive PSN games. Uh, I, I, I have to agree with him. I don't think, uh, PlayStation Network titles get a lot of hype. I mean, look, I think Sony like, like dumping money into advertising when it comes to their hardware. But, you know, you see all yeah. the move adverts, all the, uh, when the new PlayStation console or even the each, uh, like iteration, you know, the Slims and stuff, you know, they love advertising them, but when it comes yeah. to actual, actual software, never see it. Speaking of Slims, hasn't a new, like, Blue version, uh, like blue colored, uh, Super Slim come out just recently? Oh, uh, I don't know if, if it's blue. I've seen the, I've seen the Super Slim though. It looks, looks a bit cheap. Uh, I, I have a friend that has one. It's alright, but you can't, I don't think you can stand your, your PlayStation up and I, I'm, uh, because of it, you know, cause it's got that sliding disc, uh, disc yeah, right now. And that thing just doesn't look strong enough. I think that could break yeah. pretty easily. I don't yeah, know. I don't, I, I, I prefer my, my slim. Yeah. Plus it's got it's got a cool, you know, skin on it. Um I mean I I I'm, I'm a huge PlayStation fan, no doubt about yeah. it. But even I, like just like just like just a minute ago, I could not name other like exclusive PSN titles other than Super Stardust and Shatter. I couldn't think of any. Besides Wipeout, which you'd already listed. Yeah. I mean so I mean like Journey, you know, huge critical Journey, play. yeah. Where were the, you know you Journey you Flower that. Yeah, it need, it does need some more. And that's a game for everyone as well. But then again, those are, yeah, Journey and, and Super Stardust and those kinds of games. They're not really games that you really, it's, it's easy to market. Cause if you, if you throw an advertisement for Journey and, uh, somewhere, people are just gonna see like this little hooded figure running across the sand. You're like, what is this? I don't understand. And they're not, and, and they're gonna be like, yeah, it's pretty, but, why do I care? I think Sony have really creative, um, creative uh, adverts in the past, and I think I think they could come up with something impressive just to show off Journey. Yeah. You know, just a concept, something really artsy fartsy that would get people interested. But I mean, there's nothing full stop at the moment. I think that's their issue. Yeah, PS PSN titles don't really get advertised very well, but of course, PlayStation exclusives do. So I guess it kind of evens out since. The Xbox does kind of advertise their 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 Xbox Live exclusives pretty well, but they don't have any Xbox 360 exclusives at all. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, Albert's got two more questions. He says, uh, "I'm trying to decide which one I want to do first. I'm going to do this uh, this other one first. Should uh, should Sony provide faster download speeds for those with PS Plus, or would that seem as unfair?" Now. Personally, I don't know how you would be able to do that. I, I, I wouldn't, I don't understand, like, technical things. That's why when, when we're done recording, Tom puts the podcast together. I don't do it, cause it'll just turn out a mess. Um, but I, I don't understand how that would work. Like, how would a certain user manage their, manage to get their downloads to be faster? Like, is that even possible? Uh, see, I'm not sure about that either, but, I think no, definitely not. They shouldn't provide it for no. those plus. I mean, it should be if they're gonna have if they can manage faster downloads, then it should be for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Just because you know, PlayStation already has a bad reputation for you know slow installs and stuff like yeah. that. But I mean, you know, if they can if they can offer it, they'd offer it to all, and they just give them. You know, they need to compete, so they need a better product, something to boast about. There was uh, one more question from Albert, and then I think we got one more question from a d- another editor, but. uh Albert asks, when do you think the Uncharted series will end, if ever? Do you think it's just going to keep going until people get tired of it? And uh, I think that um, Naughty Dog has a reputation of just doing three games in a series and then being and then yeah, being done. I have that right. Or, well, uh, usually it's three games and then a racing game, so expect... <laughs> and, and, you know, Uncharted. Racing. Yeah, so like it, it was like, like their PS1 generation was Crash Bandicoot, Crash 2, Crash 3, and then there was Crash Team Racing. And then the, and then PS2 that 
Jack and Dax, uh, Jack 2, Jack 3, and Jack and Yeah, X. And, then, and now we have, for PS3, Uncharted, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3. So expect Uncharted at any point. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, me personally, I'm going to, uh, I would say they might keep going or they might stop. Either way, I'm good with it. Like the the Uncharted games are kind of different in that they 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 all kind of have their own thing going on. Like each game can be pulled out and just played. You don't have to play the uh, the previous ones with uh, uh, without uh, to understand this one. Even the even the complicated relationship that Nathan Drake has with with Elena Fisher, it, it can be easily explained. Like oh, it's not like a Metal Gear Solid Four, and then you go, "Who's this? What's happening?" Yeah, like you can't you can't pick out a Metal Gear game or or you know or something like that to to be like, "What's going on?" and be like, "Oh, you'll you'll just you won't know what's going on with a Metal Gear game," but with Uncharted, it's pretty straightforward. Um, either way, I'm good with. I don't know what they're gonna do. I'd like to see them keep going for a little while longer, but I don't want them. To play it out, I don't. I don't want it to be like like Uncharted Six. I'm just like, oh man, Jesus Christ! I just don't. I don't yeah. want to play Uncharted anymore. I, I think. I think eventually, a Naughty Dog's gonna be like, like we need to kind of can it because you know let's, let's let them go out with a bang. You know, it's gotta be over at some point. No, I think the whole you know, the Last of Us is to me. I think it signifies the end of the uh, well, at least Naughty Dog creating core titles for it. I think, you know, we saw Uncharted, I think Uncharted will continue on the Vita with, uh, Golden Abyss by whoever developed that. I think that will continue as a series at least. But, um, mm-hmm. I don't think, I can't see Naughty Dog making another Uncharted game. You know, they, they need to make new IPs. I mean, they made Crash Bandicoot, that was a huge hit. They made Jack, that's a huge hit. They've made Uncharted, that's a huge hit. And I think they're gonna try again with the next generation, make a new IP. Yeah, I think so. I think that depends on the Last of Us does as well. That could be the next series. And I think that's fair. You know, I mean, they, they have a trilogy for each console generation, and I, that's good. That I mean, that's that's good progress for them. If they want to do something new, I mean, I know that everybody everybody loves Uncharted. I can't think of anybody that hates it. Yeah. And even people that uh, they're like, yeah, it's not for me. They still recognize it's a good game. So you know, I mean, if they want to end it now, that's fine. I'm good with that. And do something new, just like just like I said with Sucker Punch and, and Infamous. That let them do something new. But I'm digressing. I'm sorry. Uh, there's one more question that we have, and it's from uh, one of our editors, uh, Tunde. Uh, it, his uh, his Twitter is his Twitter handle is Toguns87. That's T O G U N S. If you wanna add him, T O G U N S 87. Um, he says, "Do you intend to get Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix?" And what do you think of the series as a whole? Can I just say, I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game. I, I know what it is. It's a mix between Final Fantasy and Disney characters, but no, no interest, so. That's okay, Tom. I, uh, I have played Kingdom Hearts, and, uh, I don't even remember what's in Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix. I don't know which games are in there, but I can tell you this much. No, I'm not. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because Kingdom Hearts, uh, much like Metal Gear, has become so convoluted that I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like, not even, a lot of people say that, the, that it won't work. But I'll tell you this much. I understand Metal Gear much better when I play it in chronological order. Three, four, four ops, Peace Walker, or one, two, you know, all that. But that's not the case with Kingdom Hearts. I still have no idea what Kingdom Hearts actually is. What's up with this heart-shaped moon? What are nobodies? I don't know what they are. I don't know who is actually Ansem and who's not. I don't know who's posing as Ansem, who Ansem is, what Diz is. I don't know what any of that is. So... I've played, look, I, I've played, I never got to play Birth by Sleep, which I, uh, I hear was actually really good. I did play, uh, the first, uh, the, the two PS2 games, one and two, uh, and one was very good because it's, uh, it's simple. That was back in the day when, like, it, it, nobody knew what it was. Like, yeah. like, it was just very straightforward. It's like, oh, hey, it's this kid, Sora, and, and, oh, shit, Mickey's gone missing. But now, uh, so now Sora's gonna team up with Goofy and Donald and whatnot, and, and they're gonna meet a couple of Final Fantasy characters like Squall and uh, and Tif- uh, and Tifa, and, or not not Tifa, Aerith, uh, and Yuffie, and all that. 
and uh, and they're gonna run across like Agrabah and, and meet Aladdin and go to the underwater Atlantis and meet the Little Mermaid. And you know, you're just like, okay. I mean, uh, the first time you you see the like the first time I saw trailers, I was like, this looks ridiculous. But it is kind of a fun game, and it's very simple, so it's it's really easy to get into. Then the second one came along and fucked everything up. <laughs> Like, I don't, I, like, they brought in this organization, and there was all these hooded guys, and Riku went missing, and then he's not, and then Roxas shows up, and you're like, who's Roxas? And then they're like, Roxas is really sore, and you're like, I don't know what's going on. And then they have this, like, bridge the gap of the Game Boy game that had, like, this card, uh, card battle system, and I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> And, uh, and the DS game, I didn't really like that much either. Cause it was, it was basically ice cream simulator, is what Josh <laughs> likes to say. Cause, cause it bridges the, it also bridges the gap for Roxas. Uh, and, and what, and what happens is like, you do a mission and then there's a scene at the end where Roxas meets one of the other guys from the organization and they sit on a clock tower and, and eat ice cream together. And this happens over and over again. Like, it's do a mission, eat ice cream. Do a mission, eat ice cream. <laughs> so, like, I, I just didn't care anymore. At this point, I don't care about anything except Kingdom Hearts 3. I will play Kingdom Hearts 3 when it comes out, but yeah, after that, so. if it comes out, but after that, I'm done. Like, I don't want like just end the series so I can know what exactly is going on. Yeah. And and that's that's just basically how I feel about Kingdom Hearts. Like it's so, a decent it's a decent game. Uh oh, the last thing I was gonna say about uh, Kingdom Hearts is there's one thing that's always irritated me about that game. When uh, whenever the three of them, Sora and Donald and Goofy, are all together and a character wants to address all of them, they never say you guys. They always lead in with Sora. Donald, Goofy, uh. every time, and I'm just like, you can just make a sweeping generalization for these guys. They'll know you're talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only other people in the room. Damn. So, uh, so yeah, we're going on to our dual shot question of the week. So uh, last week uh, we asked you what feature you would like for the uh, PlayStation Four that isn't in the PlayStation Three. So we got a few responses from that. Um, from our forums, uh, Hero again, he uh, he says, I agree PlayStation 4 needs cross-game chat, even if it's just as simple as integrating Skype. It surely can't be hard to implement, and it would have made the whole PlayStation more social, and I would actually plug my headset into the console for the first time in many months. Other than that, I'm struggling to think of anything obvious that needs improving. Maybe something like exclusive avatars, themes, or in-game st- uh, stuff like skins or whatnot for earning the platinum trophy for a game. Nothing major. And it's, uh, normally rewarding enough to hear that ding and seeing your platinum pop up. But just a little uh, reward would make it even more enjoyable for hunting trophies. Uh, I agree with that. I mean, I think that would be fun. I do, I do like getting some dynamic themes every so often and throwing on, especially if, like, they they move. Like, I've got a dynamic, like, I don't want a static image. Yeah, I don't want static, I don't like the static image. It, this is, like, it's dynamic. Why? Because it has a bit of smoke that floats around the bottom. It's like, no, it's not Yeah, great. like, I, like, the, like, the theme that I have on my PlayStation 3 is an Infamous 2 theme. And it's, a. Uh, and it's got Cole standing there and, and like, half the screen is, is red and half the screen is blue. And he's got blue lightning in one hand and red lightning in the other, and they're both like flaring up, and and like little dust particles are kind of flo- uh, floating by, and it's it's a cool theme. I love yeah. that theme. There was also that Uncharted Three theme that I had a long time ago, there uh, where you know it was a plane crash and you know like smoke was coming out of the out of the plane and all that. Yeah. It was really cool. Uh, um, definitely in-game items. So I think, yeah, the in-game rewards would be the best. You know, like skins. There should be that. I mean, some games do yeah. it, but you know, I think a lot more should reward you for going the extra mile. Hero went all out for that answer. Yeah. The other two, the other two responses we got were not as uh, in-depth. Uh, Albert again said, uh, said on Twitter. He responded and he said, uh, "Free online play is what they need." Oh wait, that's what the X uh, the next Xbox needs. Ooh. So, woo, we filled our quota for Xbox jabs today. <laughs> uh, and then another person uh, pretty much uh, summarized Heroes' uh, response. Uh, Adam Stoppy on Twitter. He said, uh, "He said in all caps, party chat," and that's all I said. Yeah. So. 
Uh, those are our re- responses for last week's question. That brings us to this week's question. Um, on the on the website vgu.tv, there is an article we just did a roundtable that went up a couple of days ago. Uh, it should still be in the slider, but if it's not, just kind of Google it because we need to talk to somebody about finding features. Um, it's called "What Do You Want After a Trilogy?" Gaming Roundtable. I'm a part of it, and uh, I've noticed that in my roundtables, I usually end up saying something close uh, along the lines of "Depends," <laughs> but uh, but it does it does make sense. But the basic gist of it is is after a trilogy do you want a reboot or do you want a sequel or do you want a prequel um i'm not going to tell you what i said because i think you should read it instead go to bgu.tv find that it's in the slider at least for now um or google it what do you want after a trilogy uh but that leads us to this week's uh, question of the week it's kind of it's kind of similar but not quite uh it says our question is, what video game franchise should end? Either because they have overstayed their welcome, or to end it while it's going strong. So, that's our question for you, listeners. Any, a- any, uh, franchise that you just thought to yourself, man, they just need to kill this already and just let it go. Which franchise do you believe should not make another title? So, what do you think? <laughs> for me, that's tough. I'd say, as much as I hate to say this, because I do love the series, I say Max Payne because uh, there's not a whole lot to do. I mean, the guy, the 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 series is based around a guy that is constantly miserable. I mean, give the guy a break. If you really throw in Max Payne four, you're basically saying Max is back and he's still pissed off. Yeah, how can we make his life more miserable in this? Yeah, it's like you've taken so much from <laughs> so him. Break him, <laughs> lay him through the just oh. like, like, just let it end for him, man. That's really more for the character's sake than than for like my own. Uh, a lot of people would probably say Metal Gear, but uh, they can shut up. I gotta tell you, man, I love Metal Gear so much, and I don't want them to it's stop. It's been stupid since the second Metal Gear. Anyone else, who, anyone who says it wasn't, is lying. Because Metal Gear Solid Two is it's, stupid. Is Ma- Metal Gear Solid Two is ridiculous. So, whatever, they can carry on for all I care. I love them. <laughs> I do love them, and like I'm gonna play Rising too, so I don't care. <laughs> Um, anything else? I'd say after Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII, stop it. <laughs> no, stop. One, no one bought thirteen two after you made that game, so stop making them. I, I, I don't want any more of Lightning. Just throw out Final Fantasy XV. <laughs> um, I'm looking at my games right now, and I think that's really it. I think that's it. Well, for me, I've... Uh... And saying Assassin's Creed, because I like the first game, and you know, a lot of people don't, but I quite enjoyed that game, especially when it's new, because it was, you know, it hadn't been done before, and it was you know, quite interesting, if a bit repetitive. But uh, Assassin's Creed yeah. 2, huge step forward, amazing. And then Brotherhood, it's like, uh, Assassin's Creed 2 is quite, you know, more of the same, but it's Brotherhood, so it's not really a thing. And then Revelations came out, and I just couldn't finish it, it's just tedious nonsense and you know they killed my interest though you know I, I really enjoyed the Assassin's Creed 2 I got the platinum for it you know played that a lot but you know it just killed my interest in it with just keeping release in these games and I mean Assassin's Creed 3 just no no interest you just didn't no, care anymore like, whatever Assassin's Creed it's just become Call of Duty you know? like people people love three like they were looking forward to three because it was the American Revolution they were like this is gonna be tight so yeah but I would agree with you that I'm so tired of seeing Assassin's Creed titles, especially because there's rumors that they want to do, you know, they want to just jump straight to four. They don't want to linger on Connor at all, like they did with Exio. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and, and I think, and the rumor is that they want to do pirates. And I was like, I, uh, and I responded with that uh, to that with a resounding who gives a well, shit. Why don't you so, like, just make a new franchise, make a new IP? Like, how long are you really going to drag this yeah. out? Seriously. I mean, I, as as far as I'm concerned, I don't know why Ezio got two sequels. Yeah. I mean, Brotherhood was anyway. enjoyable, but, I mean, I, I was starting to get, like, uh, this is just more of two, but Revelation yeah. is just, no. Why, why do I want to play through another of the same game? Just no. So, uh, any other uh, franchises that you can play? I'd say... 
Mass Effect, I mean, just end it now. I mean, the, uh, all they're going to do is garner some ill will with whatever next game yeah. they make. I mean, just end it. I mean, it has a really interesting lore, but I think after Mass Effect 3, unless they make a really interesting type of prequel, it's set in the universe. Well, just, I, saw, I saw an don't. article a little while ago. People said, uh, don't, uh, uh, oh. Um, but they said, uh, they said, don't think of it as Mass Effect 4, because they're making another game. They, they yeah. said, don't think of it as Mass, as Mass Effect 4. So, are you saying just completely no more in that universe? Or are you just saying no more Shepard? So definitely no more Shepard. But, um, I think, you know, I think it's just no more Earth, kind of no more Reaper crap, you know, just... I think that universe has so much interesting lore. I mean, that like codex is filled with interesting stuff, and I think they need to exploit that. I mean, all those different planets, you know, all the different... I mean, it could be a different even a different type of game. You know, a shooter in that universe would be cool. Just no, no more of that. Just the semi kind of RPG thing. Right. You either go for the RPG or just don't bother. And uh, one last one I'd like to say is Hitman because I loved uh, I love Hitman games, especially uh, Contracts and Blood Money. And I think Absolution, you know, is eh. It's it's good. It's a good game, but as a Hitman game, I'd say it's it's pretty disappointing. You know, especially I I enjoyed Hitman. I'm I'm enjoying Hitman Absolution. Mm-hmm. I should say I enjoyed it too, but. I mean, as a Hitman game, you know, it's not, <laughs> it really isn't. It right. Mean, it's just, just, it's more of a stealth game, the new one. It's just, oh, uh, I don't know, I think it went down, and now it's IO Interactive's given up the IP to Square Enix now. Uh-oh. And I, uh, I just, just, no, leave it alone, don't ruin. <laughs> I think I have two more. Uh, first off, I'm going to say Kane and Lynch. Mm. I like Kane and Lynch. I know that a lot of people don't, but I'm okay. inexplicably, <laughs> I'm inexplicably just drawn to it. Like, the characters just seem fascinating to me. It's these two old assholes just yelling at each other. So, and killing people. And, I, I mean, one was good. It had a lot of problems. Two was interesting, especially with the YouTube kind of grainy camera thing going on. Um, but, I think I'd like to see just one more, and then that's it. No more. Don't do any more. Just yeah. because it ended on a on kind of a cl- on kind of a cliffhanger in a way, where they uh, uh, spoilers uh, like you really care because who uh, who else but me likes Kevin Lynch? Uh, <laughs> spoilers. They um, they they hijack a plane, and uh, uh, Kane uh, and Lynch hijack a plane at the very end with you, the cameraman, following them. And they leave the cameraman behind, and the tape ends. Like the like the plane takes off down the runway, and the and the tape just ends, and credits start rolling. So finish out that story with one game, and just that's it. No more Kane and Lynch, because fucking nobody but me is gonna buy it anyway. So yeah. Um, and the last one, the last one I want to put out there is Infamous. Like Cole's story is done. Yeah. I mean, if you, uh, like, Tom, you haven't finished it, but I think you, I think you've mentioned that you have the ending spoiled to you. So you know yeah. that, uh, both endings are pretty definitive in Infamous 2. Like, Cole's story, it's over, it's done. In, in both, in both sections. Now, if you want to do a different conduit, or if you want to do, a, an alternate timeline game where, you know, you, you play as Kessler, spoilers, Kessler's Cole in the first game. But uh I personally think leave it alone. It's done. It's done. And I think it's great where it left off. Those are two great games, and they uh, they don't need it anymore. But um I think that's about, uh, about going to wrap us up. Tom, do you think so? Yeah. So let me grab my trusty piece of paper. All right. We uh, thank you again for listening to VGU.TV's PlayStation podcast. This is a long episode uh, with the uh, with the interview and all. We're, it's, we're pro- so thanks for sticking with us. If you made it this far, probably about. I mean, uh, as we're recording, I'm kind of adding the the time in my head. I'm, I'd say we're probably around two hours right now. But uh, thank you for sticking this uh, this long. We really appreciate it. Uh, come to our site vgu.tv. We also uh, they also have a Twitter and a Facebook VGU TV. And this this show will go up probably tomorrow, maybe the day after at the latest uh, on our YouTube VGU TV official. DualShock has has a Facebook and a, and a Twitter. Uh, find us under Dual Shock Show, or if you want to tweet at us individually, I am at Matman07, and Tom is at Gaming Hobbyist. Or if you want to play with us on PSN, we're always looking for new friends. 
I'm Madman310. And Tom is Pi underscore Guy. That Pi Guy? Got Pi. That's about going to wrap us up for episode two of DualShock. We really appreciate you sticking around. We hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.